What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to determine if two linear equations are perpendicular to each other, right? And in order to do this, we have to use the slope-intercept form of an equation, which is this bad boy right here. Y is equal to mx plus b, all right? Now, if you need kind of a refresher on that, I'll link a video to that in the card above, but I will briefly explain kind of the, the main points about it. So with this equation right here, this m, this number right here, that is next to the x, is always your slope. And this number that always comes at the end by itself with nothing attached to it is always your y-intercept. Okay, now for two lines to be perpendicular, the y-intercepts don't actually matter. The only thing that really matters is that the slopes have to be reciprocals and they have to have opposite signs on each other. Okay, so that means if one is positive, the other one has to be negative. Okay, if they're both positive or they're both negative, it's not gonna work. Okay, so let me give you an example. So if you had these two equations right here, so y is equal to two-fifths x plus three and y is equal to negative five halves x plus one, okay? Are these two linear equations perpendicular to each other? Well, again, in order to check that, you just have to check their slopes. Okay, so on this first equation, the slope right here, the number that's next to the x is positive two fifths, right? And then on this other equation, the slope, right? The number that's next to the x is negative five halves, okay? So as you can see, two fifths, and five halves are reciprocals, right? And also, this two fifths is positive and this one is negative. So since they are reciprocals of one another and they have opposite signs, that means these two linear equations are perpendicular to each other, okay? And I'm gonna uh, graph each of these equations really quick just so you can see that that's the case. Okay, so let's start with this first equation right here. So when you're graphing equations that are in slope-intercept form, the first thing you can do is graph its y-intercept, okay? And so this number just tells you where along the y-axis you plot your point. So we're gonna plot a point on the y-axis at positive three. Okay, so right there, positive three. Okay, and then all you have to do is apply that slope starting at this point right here. Okay, so the slope right here on this side is, so the slope is equal to two fifths, right? So the top number is your rise and the bottom number is your run. So we're gonna go up two and then over five to the right in the positive direction. Okay, so starting from this point right here, we're gonna go up one, two, and then over five. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we just found another point right here. So now we just have to draw a straight line between our two points. Okay, so this is the graph of our first equation right here. So now let's graph the second one really quick. So again, the easiest part to start with is just graphing your y-intercept, which again is just this number here at the end. So it's at positive one. So you're just gonna come along your y-axis and plot a point at positive one right there. Okay, now the slope right here on this one is the slope is equal to negative five halves, okay? But the negative sign, you wanna throw it either to the top or the bottom. So it could either be negative five over two, or it could be positive five over negative two. Okay, either one of these two would work. Uh, so let's just use the first one. So again, the top number tells you your rise, and the bottom number tells you your run, right? So in this case, we're gonna go down five spaces, right, because it's negative, and then we're gonna go over to the right two spaces in the positive direction. Okay, so again, starting from the point we just plotted, we're gonna go down five. So one, two, three, four, five, and then over two, one, two. Okay, so we just found another point right here. So again, just draw a straight line between your two points. Okay, so as you can see, these two lines are exactly perpendicular to each other. Okay, and we could even draw a right angle sign on it just to show that these two lines truly are at a 90 degree angle. Okay, so this is the only example that I'm going to graph, but I'm gonna do a couple more examples where I show you how to solve just using the equations, okay? 
Okay, now these are the last two examples I'm going to cover. So let's start with this one on the top. So let's figure out if these two linear equations are perpendicular to each other. Okay, so here we have y is equal to negative 3x minus 8 and y is equal to 1 third, positive 1 third, x plus 9. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is just make sure that both of the equations that you're comparing are in slope intercept form. And if you remember, it's this thing right here, y is equal to mx plus b, okay? So both of these are already in this form right here, right? Because we have y is equal to, right? y is equal to, y is equal to some number times x, right? Some number times x, some number times x, and then plus or minus a number at the end, right? Plus a number here, minus a number here. Okay, so since they're both in slope intercept form, the only thing you really have to do is compare their slopes. So again, the slopes are the number right here that's next to the x, right? So in this first equation, the number would be negative three, okay? And in this second equation, the number would be positive one third, okay? So first of all, in order for these to per be perpendicular, their slopes have to be reciprocals, which in this case they are, right? Three, if you wanted to write that as a fraction, you could write it as three over one, right? And what's the reciprocal of three over one? Well, it'd just be one over three, which is what we have over here, right? So that checks that box. And then the other thing you wanna check for is that they have opposite signs. So one has to be negative, like this one, and the other one has to be positive like this one. Okay, so since the slopes meet both of those requirements, that means these two equations are perpendicular. All right, not too bad, right? Let's do one more example here. So this last one says we're gonna compare seven x plus y is equal to 10 and negative seven y is equal to x. Okay, so again, first thing you wanna do is put it into this form. Okay, so you want y is equal to all this stuff, right? So you're basically solving for y. So let's start with this first example, or first equation right here. So let's solve for y. Uh, so if we want y by itself on one side of the equal sign, we need to get rid of the 7x. So in order to do that, I'm gonna subtract by 7x. And what you do to one side, you do to the other, right? So then these 7x's cancel out. So we're just left with positive y on this side, right? And then that's gonna be equal to 10 minus 7x. Or another way I could write that is negative 7x plus 10, right? Negative 7x plus 10. And the reason I did that is because now it's in slope intercept form, right? Our x term comes before our number at the end. So this one's good. So now let's work on this second equation. So again, we wanna isolate y by itself. So I need to get rid of this negative seven. So in order to do that, I'm going to divide by negative seven. And what you do to one side, you do to the other, okay? So then these negative sevens cancel out, so you're just left with y on this side. And then y is equal to x over negative seven. Or another way I could write that is negative one seventh times x. Okay, now this last problem is essentially in slope intercept form, but as you can see, our equation down here is missing a number at the very end, right? So if you wanted to uh, kind of fill in the blank, just to kind of keep everything in order, you could put plus zero at the end, okay? Not that we need the y-intercepts, we don't really need those last numbers, but you can do that if you want just to keep it in order. Okay, so now that they're both in slope-intercept form, the main thing we wanna compare are their slopes, right? So with this first uh, equation, our slope is negative seven. And in this second equation, our slope is negative one seventh. Okay, so they are reciprocals, right? The reciprocal of seven is one seventh, but as you can see, they're both negative, right? So since they both have the same sign, that won't work, okay? So that means that these two equations are not perpendicular. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or wanna see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below. Also, there's a couple playlists attached that I think you'll find helpful. So definitely check those out and I'll see you there.